Hi everybody, it is today's rapid fire summary of what's going on in Florida with COVID-19. The date is April 3rd, 2021. And I am of course Rebecca Jones, whistleblower, geographer, etc. So Florida has now banned COVID-19 passports, which seems like a move to stifle or just outright deny the opportunity for any legitimate discussion about whether or not they might be important. Florida could always decide not to participate, but an outright ban makes it limited as to how much value uh, vaccine passports from other states or countries would have in the state. We know that one of the most vaccine hesitant groups is the uh, middle to all right. 40% of Republicans have said that they will not take the vaccine. So DeSantis banning passports only further instigates a dangerous movement of anti-vaxxers that encourages vaccine hesitancy and could cost lives and allow the spread of more transmissible, more infectious variants of the virus to spread. But DeSantis has never cared about lives, it's always been about money. So Florida continues to have one of the highest rates of infections and new cases in the country. Last week, they were among the worst for new hospitalizations per capita, new cases per capita, and test positivity per capita. Age group 18 to 34 increased more than 15% and under 18 increased nearly 10% over the previous week. Younger persons have been locked out of vaccine access so far this year in Florida, but starting Monday, April 5th, all persons 16 and older will be able to get the vaccine. So please make your appointment and make sure you get in that line. Spring break recently um, occurred in Florida, but there's currently no count of how many people brought the virus in with them or caught it in Florida and took it home. You need robust contact tracing for that and Florida doesn't participate in that process. I was diagnosed with COVID-19 in Florida for the first time last January, or this previous January, and still have not received a call from a contact tracer. Going on to schools now, we have nearly 100,000 cases in Florida's K-12 schools that are confirmed by the Florida Department of Health. And of the 5,621 schools in the state, not one has gone without a case of COVID-19. Every single school in the state of Florida has reported at least one case of COVID-19. 85% have reported more than one case of COVID-19. There's also been a lot of interest lately in an article that was published in the Journal of uh, Public Health that discussed the issue of underreporting of deaths in the state of Florida, determining that 4,924 deaths should have been attributed to COVID-19 but were instead contributed to a comorbidity which removed them from the death count in the state. Comorbidities can be anything from diabetes to heart attacks which we know COVID-19 can cause and these ones were eliminated for that purpose so this is not your standard the number of how many people died in excess of the previous year. These are ones with COVID-19 related deaths. As a geographer and a researcher with experience in analyzing post-disaster death counts, this is something that is extremely important. One thing that this study did not include was a robust calculation of indirect deaths. So those who in a hurricane, let's say, die from heat exhaustion a week later from not having power or not having power led to the failure of one of their necessary medical devices, carbon monoxide poisoning like happened in the uh, freeze in Texas several months ago. Those are not considered direct deaths because they weren't caused by the event themselves, but those people would not have died if the event had not occurred. In the context of COVID-19, these would include people who had heart attacks or strokes but did not get life-saving medical care due to fear of going to the hospital. Um, and currently that number is estimated by the CDC to be 40,475 in Florida which is 6,236 more than the state currently reports. And the CDC data is always several weeks behind with the state. So that is where we are today. Hopefully good things will be happening now that vaccine access has been open to everyone who can safely get it. We are seeing good progress in trials of people aged 12 to 15. Hopefully that will be out there and people will be able to get it soon. Home antigen tests were recently authorized by the FDA. So if you cannot make the time to go repeatedly to the clinic or a testing location, you can test at home. Those should be on the market within the next few weeks. 
and we encourage everyone to test. And if you have a positive, please report it to your uh, county health department because otherwise we may be underestimating the extent of the virus and won't be able to anticipate additional hospitalizations, which can put strain on our hospital system. So that is it. Thank you guys. Stay safe, stay six feet apart, wear a mask, and please get vaccinated. Thanks.